today we're doing more on the six wheel drive ambulance we've been having some vibrations while we drive and uh, I had previously thought it was road noise but I crawled under and had a bit of an inspect and found it it was not but uh, let's crawl under again I'll we'll have a look and I'll show you what the problem is all right we are currently underneath now now let's explain what we're looking at this is a six wheel drive and yes all six wheels drive the third axle is not a lazy axle um, these Land Rovers were originally set up for a power trailer they were a 4x4 modified into a six wheel drive and they used this shaft here as the power trailer it's a PTO drive so the down here is our second axle over the back here is our third and they have this big carden joint up here now the thing that normally goes in these is this center bearing now we replaced this about 12 months ago and the camera is magneted to this shaft but I can move this around a bit and there's no real play in that but uh, when I got to this guy we've got a problem now normally the carden joint goes in these but this is not the case this flange here is moving and it should not be now when we did replace this bearing we had to take this flange off and there's a nut that holds that flange on so I think we're gonna have to pull this part of the shaft off drop it down on top of here and then either do that nut up or we're gonna to have to find a replacement nut I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into the RPS the repair part schedule that the army um, issued with these and uh, find the right size nut for that and I'll go down and buy some new nylock nuts take the 4 before little parenti down to do that um, so yeah that will definitely have been where my vibrations have been coming from um, all my other shafts I've checked that they seem to be quite firm it doesn't seem to be any sort of play in those um, and I'll probably be trying to hit some of them up with a grease gun while I'm under here as well but uh, yeah we certainly need to take this guy off uh, and that's going to be slow because I don't have the correct tool to take these flange bolts off and it also means I'm going to have to roll it backwards and forwards to get this flange to turn around to the right way but uh, you know we'll get there Let's uh let's go see what I can find tool wise. Two hours later. Alright, so after breakfast I went hunting uh around the town for bits and pieces. Now um I have to do the clutch slave, so I got some metric flare spanners, because I couldn't find singular ones. Scraper to get some of the gasket stuff off when I changed the um slave cylinder and a one-man brake bleeder kit I could have probably used a soft drink bottle like a disposable water bottle and some vinyl hose but you know it was on the shelf a replacement for my 36 mil wheel nut socket that went MIA but crucially this is an axle nut socket and I think the problem we had last time that has probably led to this situation we have now is the socket I had last time probably wasn't quite deep enough and it's probably bottomed out um, when I've been trying to do that nut up so this is a nice deep socket um, specifically designed for it so I think that will do the job but only one place in town had wheel nut sockets and they only had the King Crown brand ones so that's about 50 Aussie dollary dues for that one um, not cheap now when I put it back on because I can't find a nut anywhere in town that size I have some thread locker um, good Loctite brand stuff this is about 30 bucks on its own for this little bottle but if I have to pay what like the 50 to close to 100 bucks by the time I buy some of this stuff 50 for those flare nuts um, if I have to pay about 100 bucks to get this done it's still magnitudes of order cheaper than if that drive to hinge comes off while I'm driving but anyway um, it's now it's hit 25 degrees outside which doesn't sound like it's too bad but uh, the Sun is uh, road meltingly hot so uh, I think I'm going to be staying inside for a little bit and wait till it cools off. In fact, multiple sclerosis is catching up with me a bit and uh, I've already done several full days helping with a, uh, a family crisis, which uh, has also probably led to the wear and tear on this vehicle that I have to fix now anyway. So um, I may have to be very reluctantly forced to sit still for uh, a couple of days and um, 
go from there. Anyway, um, let's cut to the next clip where I'm actually doing something useful. Six and a half hours later. So, we're under here, and this is where the painstaking bit starts. Now, the first thing to do around here, we want to double check our problem still exists, right? So we're going to have to do something about it. Um, first thing we want to do is make sure we want to preserve the phasing of these CVs, or uni joints rather. They're not constant velocity joints, although this spicer joint, or carden joint, sorry, um, is two uni joints with a cup in the middle so that they stay relative to each other it's kind of like the poor man's universal or poor man's cv joint so they do maintain a relative velocity to each other um, if you don't you'd end up with some weird things going on now there are some interesting little marks here that line up i can probably use them to help line it up i don't see them going on anywhere else these are nylocks and I don't have a prop shaft removal tool, so this is going to take two spanners and a lot of time. So, we need to find two spanners that fit. And it sounds like the Ambos are busy at the moment. Definitely busy. Ah, and a different size nut, otherwise 17 is going to do the job. Oh, what joy of Land Rovers! Stuff's never the freaking same size. Me thinks something major has happened on the highway. Um, it's where those sirens seem to be coming from. Oh. I can see why in my 4x4 that they welded the bolts into these flanges. Um, Cause yeah, if you've got to like tow these things or something for a long period of time, you generally got to pull at least one of the prop shafts off. Um, which I will tell you now, A is not a fun job in inclement weather. What a tedious pain in the ass job. Let's see if I can get a ratchet spanner in there. Alright, barcode to the rescue. I got ratchet spanner in here. Now, if I get this right, I might be able to get the ring spanner around that end now. Oh, now we're cooking with gas. Alright. Now it's too loose for the ratchet spanner to ratchet, which means it's probably about finger tight. And there are flies having a field day with my legs right now, which I have to admit is not fun. All right, take this out now. Ah, oh. <laughs> okay. Well, at least I'm not going to lose that bolt then. Um, okay. Now we've got another one to do. We'll be back once we've done the rest of this tedious bit. Two thousand years later. All right, so I managed to achieve some kind of miracle. I can get it the third bolt without having to roll it forward, which means I might be able to get the fourth one. So if I can get good access to this one. Oh, this is number four. Let's see if I can get the end of the spanner on it. All right, we're gonna have to change camera angles. Hold up. Now, I'm sorry if we're a bit close and a bit out of focus. Space is a little limited under here. But uh, we're gonna be here for a little bit, getting this one undone. All right, I think we're doing good. Now, if this grease mark here is anything to go by, I've been flinging a bit of grease out of this joint, so it's good if there's grease in there to fling out. And I'll probably take the chance to articulate it while I've got this out. And, um, we can't get grease in the mouth. All right. So, note to self, GoPro branded magnetic brackets are not as good as the one that I made. All right. Can we? Take this flange off now. Oh, 
can we get the slip joint to contract and to pull away from this? Uh, that is going to be the bigger issue by the look of things. How am I going to do that? All right. Okay. That is going to be a pain. Can I? So there's that nylock nut in there. I can definitely feel it. I'm so close. All right. So I just got up, went inside to get some stuff, and come back. Now I've got wild head spins. Ever since that last attack of MS, I get head spins now. It's not fun. Now, what have we got? I've got a few things to try. Something a little sacrificial here. I might be able to gently persuade those flange halves to move. Perhaps not. Just. They glue themselves on or some shit. And now there is a fly on my leg again. Go away, fly. Ah, right. oh, this is going to be a typical Land Rover job. I oh, know, let's see if we can get this off. Why is nothing ever straightforward with these things? Many tic tacs later. Alright, so uh, swear words did the trick and hitting the chisel a bit harder. Alright, now I can drop you out of the way. I can get a good look at my UJs while I'm there. They all seem to be pretty good. We'll get the grease gun on them before we put it back. Now, this is our offending nut right here, and I'm getting stuff sprinkled on me. Let's get my socket out of the packet. All right, this is where you hear more profanities when I find out this is the wrong size. Although I, for sure, check the RPS for this. All right, no good, it's the right size. Now, this uh, shaft can free spin. I may need to engage the shaft or get a strap wrench on it to do this bit. But we'll see if my hands are going to be good enough to do the job. Where is my rattle gun? Alright, let's change our camera angle. Yeah. Alright. Reverso. Yep. Give it a bit more guts. Is our nut in there. Okay, now we're going to go get the Loctite, which means I've got to get up again. What fun. Alright, I'm back. I've got head spins. Oh, bloody hell, it's tiring. Alright, I've got some Loctite, Loctite 243. Um, where is the nut? Oh. I'm going to put some Loctite on this. These are a nylock nut, and they're designed to, uh, that nylon bush is designed to stop this rattling off, but for some reason I think that bit is knackered. Can't get another one of these locally, not at least until I need to use this vehicle again. I didn't bring flush cutters. Oh, and I got head spins again. Oh, God. Everybody seems to think I'm okay with MS, but I tell you, there are times like this where it's a problem. All right. See if I can chip, chop this little bit off with Leatherman. Yay! Leatherman to the rescue. Now, where'd the nut go? Ah! Right, put the lid back on. Let's locate the nut. There's my nut. One of two. In this case, it's only one. I don't know what you call this thing then. All right, cap can go up there. Now I'm operating upside down. So, I'll put a bit of Loctite in here. Doing this upside down is 
Requires some dexterity, I'll admit that much. Oh, oh this is a goopy sort of stuff. It's uh, kind of thick, which is actually not necessarily a bad thing at the moment. So I've put a, uh, a guesstimated amount on there. It's at least a full lap. So let's, by feel, navigate this nut back on. Okay, let's go forward setting. All right. Okay. Yeah. Want to make doubly sure that thing is on properly. You know what? To be sure, to be sure. Give it another whack. With Loctite and this. This thing ain't coming off in a hurry. All right. Now, I've got to get out again. I'm going to get the grease gun and I'm going to, while I can flex this card and joint around, um, I'm going to get the grease gun into all of that. All right, so I had to get up, crawl back under again. So I've got head spins. Oh, it gets tedious. Life gets tedious, don't it? Oh, life's tedious, ain't it? I've got to remember that story. It's one my mother sings. It's you open a door and the flies come in. You open the door and the flies swarm in. You close the door and I'm sweating again. Or something like that, anyway. Can we get your onto that one? Okay. Pop a little bit into here. All right, we tried. Grass off that. I'm doing this one by feel, sort of. Should be somewhere there. Feels like it. Put a bit of grease in there now. All right, now I can't remember if there's a central one, but I greased the hell out of this one. We took it off the first time. Because I knew how much of a pain in the ass it was to get off. There's a cup that interlinks these two uni joints. And it needs to be greased too. And I don't recall how to get the grease into that cup. I think there's a third nipple in there somewhere. Um, I can probably, probably get the grease needles out. And poke a bit of grease in there. But uh, that I can do with the shaft on and being as I want to see the end of this job so let's see where's our, where's our scuff mark there's our scuff mark there so let's have a look here let's see if I can do this without trapping a finger because that would not be ideal so uh, I was re I was on the uh, Parenti Owners Australia forum or a Facebook page a while ago Somebody said, you know, Land Rovers make mechanics out of you. Well, you know, I had a Toyota, Toyota Hi-Ace uh, van was my first vehicle. And then I had a, uh, what was it? A, um, a Nissan X-Trail, a T30 model. They didn't make much mechanics out of me. They made more electronic technicians out of me. All right, I've got to get these nuts on. All right, well, I found all four bolts. And all four nuts rather and I didn't lose any that's like a major a major goal I'm gonna loosely pack up a few tools here and then we'll get the two spanners out and we'll put this thing back where it should be oh. and then we're gonna do this clutch slave cylinder although I can guarantee the way I feel right now I'm not doing that today that's a tomorrow job, as it has been for the last couple of weeks. And it begins. One eternity later. Alright. I think we're done. We're done. Alright. Not clonking around. This is a self-centering bearing with a rubber bit on it. Um, <clears throat> all right. 
I think now it's test drive time. I might uh, get my stronger magnet and clip the GoPro on underneath here. We'll have a look at how all the drive shafts move. Before I do that, I'm gonna get in with the grit mitt soap. All right, this is grit mitt soap. This is an alternative to Solvol that is not made anymore. It's made by an Australian company called Envirofluid. They were nice enough to send me uh, about 12 blocks or so to evaluate. I did a video with that. Um, I can put the link below to that video. But this stuff works so much better than Solvol. We're back at my desk. I had to fix my air conditioner and I'm hot and sweaty and irritable. So uh, you're gonna deal with the background noise, I'm sure. Anyway, um, that's the drive shaft done. Test drive felt pretty good to me. I haven't looked at the, the uh, under footage yet or the footage from underneath. Um, I'll get to that at some point in editing, which will be probably sometime soon. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I'm going to tackle the um, clutch slave cylinder tomorrow, largely because my memory is slipping and my ability to articulate is going with it. Um, I've got a little overheated um, and that is a risk with me and my multiple sclerosis. So yeah, um, I'm going to call this quits. I hope you found it interesting. I know there's a couple of guys that have been asking me about this one. So uh, yeah, here it is. So uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Feel free to give us a thumbs up if you do, if you give us a thumbs down. The way YouTube's doing stuff now, I won't know how many thumbs down unless I really go looking anyway. So if you want a thumbs down, thumbs down. Uh, I'm not begging for likes, I'm not begging for profit. So I'm just doing this because I'm doing it. I'll see you later. Hope you had fun and uh, we'll catch up in the next episode.